whoa, 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 yeah, whoa, fine, great, yeah, being a Swift, why not? But let's do another opinionated infrastructure because it's been too long. I've missed you and I hope you missed me. Uh, anyway, so opinionated infrastructure is, 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 is all about my reckons, um, what I think about the industry, uh, what I think about is happening in the software business and so on. Uh, and I'm here to talk about Swift. Uh, developers love Apple. In fact, if you're south of market or in Shoreditch or in Berlin, the only thing developers will pay for is uh, Apple hardware. They love their Apple hardware. They love their Macs. Uh, they love their iPhones. Um, we've seen a, a bit of bit of growth in Android recently. It's true. Um, you know, there are some uh, developers are beginning to think, hey, maybe there's a, a different world out there I should explore. But still, Apple first is still very much kind of. Um, how we live now from a developer perspective. And that's true uh, not just for the web developers and the cloud natives, uh, we're increasingly seeing that from the enterprise companies too. Uh, they've understood that from a business perspective, uh, when we talk about mobile first, really we mean Apple first. And from that, uh, in terms of, of that ecosystem, um, we've certainly seen some interesting investments from the like of, of IBM, who normally would be, okay, we need to support everything. We're going to support Windows Phone. We're going to support BlackBerry, even though it's dead. We're going to support Android. We're going to support Apple. Support everything. Support all the things. Um, that's kind of IBM business as usual. That's enterprise business as usual. But today, in this sort of era of design, and, uh, and in fact, Apple explicitly says it's part of their job to make decisions on behalf of uh, the end user. So IBM is kind of, well... If we want to be like Apple, we need to make decisions on behalf of the enterprise. And one of those decisions is, is Apple first. So anyway, uh, back to Swift, back to, to thinking about this programming language. Um, you know, Apple does, uh, has one uh, because of developers. Um, it was a platform that, that uh, you know, developers were prepared to invest a lot of time, energy and attention in getting good at, Objective C, uh, not necessarily the easiest programming environment, but, you know, developers were kind of like, well, I want to show my chops. Uh, it's a great ecosystem, um, I'm prepared to learn this, and frankly, uh, because it's C-like uh, and compiled, a highly performant language. Uh, but Apple needed to make things a little bit easier, they wanted to get a bit more modern, and, and, and with Swift, uh, they called it Objective-C without the C. So the idea is it's still compiled, but it's like a scripting language, uh, fast, terse, easy to use, um, uh, more type safe. And uh, basically, uh, Apple's sort of on this journey, trying to uh, make sure that it keeps the developers on side. There have been some complaints about Xcode and so on. Obviously, Swift um, will, uh, will be part of, of that world, and we're very much part of, of an optimized, end-to-end -end Apple development experience. But what's interesting is that we're now seeing some moves away from that. Apple realized, well, you know, to get broader-based adoption and to get developers to say, well, actually, yes, we're going to commit, they needed a more open story. So at the last Worldwide Developer Conference, it was announced that Apple would be open sourcing Swift. Um, it's an extremely fast-moving programming language, uh, the fastest Redmunk has ever seen in our program programming language rankings. So uh, Apple said we're going to open source it, and then some interesting things happened. Uh, I, I mentioned IBM. Well, IBM said, well, okay, um, if, I, if Apple's going to open source it, uh, that's something that IBM uh, likes to see in the infrastructures and uh, platforms it supports. And so uh, they did some really interesting things. We're going to take Swift onto the server side. We're going to see it supported on Ubuntu. And uh, IBM is going to lead those efforts. So much like we've seen uh, JavaScript and then Node.js on the server, we're going to have Swift and a, a server environment as well, which opens things up. Um, so uh, from Redmond tracking perspective, Swift has moved very, very quickly, got up to number 18. Our latest rankings see it up to number 17. Um, the implications are not entirely clear of this open source move. Um, certainly, uh, server-side Swift's not a big thing yet, uh, but we think it's, it's, it's certainly got some opportunity. And this move that, that, that Apple has made to open source and open up the environment, increasingly that's how we live now. Um, you know, you, you, you know, even um, so, we've had uh, a recent announcement of a gaming engine from Amazon. And uh, Amazon, as, as a rule, doesn't open source everything, uh, but in this case they have. Uh, developers are very willing to trade openness for convenience, but they do like to feel uh, that they could see the code, that they, uh, there's at least some uh, option of openness. And I think that's, that's um, what we're seeing from Swift. 
It's really interesting. Swift going to continue to grow. We're going to continue to track it. The ecosystem is growing, and I guess that's mobile first. And um, that's also opinionated infrastructure. Uh, yeah, wow. Fine, great. Yeah, being a Swift.